It is always now. The reality of your life is now. And, and we spend most of our lives forgetting this truth, repudiating it, fleeing it, overlooking it. And, and the, the horror is that we succeed. Memory is an illusion. It's all gone. So everything you know about that makes an impression on you is no longer there. You will be avenged. That memory has got you hooked. It holds you to the past. And it holds you to death. Final Fantasy XII is a story about a ragtag group of rebels fighting to save their homeland from the evil empire. But it's also about something deeper, something universal. It's about living in the present, right here, right now. An idea called mindfulness. It's a story about the drive for equality, tit for tat, an eye for an eye, and how the desire for revenge won't allow us to move on how it forces us into squandering our conscious reality, how it chains us to the past. The illusions of the past. You think to have cast them off, only to find them years later, unwearying, unrelenting. The past can bind a man as surely as irons. These are ideas studied by scientists and psychologists, preached about by reverends, monks, and atheists, and by a game designer named Yasumi Matsuno. Let's take a look at how he applied these concepts to the Princess Ashes story. Yasumi begins the story by showing Dalmaska fall to the Empire. Ash's husband, Razzler, dies in battle, and her father is slain during the signing of his conditional surrender. Your Majesty. <laughs> Ash is driven by the wake of these events for the next two years. After Dalmaska's fall, she would lead a resistance group from the shadows, while the rest of the world believed she had taken her own life in despair. Finally, with a chance to ambush the Imperial leaders at a banquet, she strikes. But the Empire was ready, and in the chaos of retreat, she crosses paths with the playable party, and they begin working together. With her resistance in shambles, Ash decides to publicly reveal herself, and ask the neighboring nations to ally with her in a new war with the Empire. However, because everyone has believed her to be dead for the past two years, she needs something to prove her identity. She demands the party take her to retrieve a royal heirloom so that she can prove herself to be the princess. The heirloom she needs is a stone and upon finding it, she sees a vision of Razzler. She will continue to see visions of Razzler throughout the story, and each time, take them to mean that the war path she is on is righteous. Razzler. But the stone is more than a trinket. It's a weapon of mass destruction.
Realizing the power she now holds, she spends the rest of the second act trying to learn how to detonate the stone again. Van recognizes her blind hatred and shares these heartfelt words with her. Hating the Empire, getting revenge, it's all I ever thought about. It made me feel hollow, alone. And then I'd miss my brother. I'd say stuff like, I'm gonna be a sky pirate or some other stupid thing. Just anything to keep my mind off it. I was just, I was running away. In the third act, when Ash is faced with the choice to take the ultimate weapon or destroy it, while being taunted by her father's murderer. No, we cannot escape the past. This man is living proof. What is your past, daughter of Damasca? Did you not swear revenge? Do the dead not demand it? And being beckoned by her memory's illusion, she stops and considers the present moment. She looks at Van and remembers his words. She realizes where the wake of past injustices has taken her, and that her desire for revenge is leading her to dishonor the memory of her loved ones. You are not the kind to take base revenge! She literally destroys the illusion of her memory. She discards the weapon, and she realizes she has everything she needs right now. You'll make it. You got good friends. 